So I've seen Tulsi Gabbard's been posting videos to the TL and they have been absolute bangers, man. Oh my God. Look at this. Remember the people saying that Tulsi Gabbard was basically just like Bernie, but hotter? Debatable, by the way. Government is already too big and powerful as it is. The Build Back Better bill will only make it worse. This was supposed to be like the social democrat like this was the anti-war like populist left uh here we are with hannity here's the reality with the bill that they're continuing to push forward is that our government is too powerful and too big even as it is and this bill is only going to make matters worse uh, the provisions in the bill are so vague that really it's going to be unelected bureaucrats who end up deciding how these provisions are implemented and no accountability uh, and and really it'll empower them to be able to stick now i want to be clear this is not even like maga trump or rhetoric this is Reagan era stuff. This is Reagan language. Shuan Head was despairing over this on Twitter earlier. She's totally right. This is Reagan language. The big, powerful government, unelected bureaucrats deciding X and Y. This, yeah, this is this is neocon shit. Exactly. This is neoconservatism. This isn't even like populist Trump le like right, you know, left appropriating populism. It's this is just neoconservatism. Um she did not take very long to fall. Do you guys remember just a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I was saying Tulsi Gabbard is just doing all this. She's gunning for her place in Fox News. Uh, she is going to be a full on conservative. Just give it a few years. And she's with Hannity right now. Not even Tucker Carlson, who at least like fakes his populist working class. Hannity. Stick their noses into every aspect of our lives, furthering this this cradle to grave mentality of government cradle to grave mentality of government dependence for having proper infrastructure allowing for uh paid parental leave and daycare this is this is literally neocon reagan shit this my thatcher hello uh i apparently all that piss reanimated her from her grave government dependence that makes us lose even more of our autonomy as we are paying for it as government gets bigger our wallets are getting smaller it, like, like, this is just straight neocon shit. This isn't just, like, anti-government overreach. It is opposed to the concept of investing in our system. And yes, that is how paying taxes work. Uh, uh, in incredible. Um, oh, we've also got some Rittenhouse grifting here. here to also on Fox, by the way. Spawn, Tulsi Gabbard, former Hawaii of Congresswoman course. and a former presidential candidate. Uh, Congresswoman... She's like, uh, is she ever not on Fox News? Does she just like sleep at the studio now? Seriously, like he, the full segment is right here with, with with this is from November 14th talking with Hannity. And then November 15th here is talking about Rittenhouse. Like, is the, does she just sleep there now? What are we how are we doing? Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I've been following you on Twitter and some of your public comments. Part of the most the most concerning thing that I've been seeing from the media is that they don't I genuinely think she's going to be Trump's VP pick in 2024. What a meme that would be, dude. Holy shit. Because you're right, it can't be Pence because Pence fell out with the administration because Pence wasn't willing to do the thing he legally couldn't do with the verification of the electoral results. If Tulsi ended up being the pick, that would be insane. And you know what would happen, by the way? All of those faux leftists we talked about, like Nico House or... um. Uh, Jimmy Dore or whatever, they would support Trump. They would full-on support Trump, being like, hey, at least they're going to stir up the system. Before, they simply said, we have to keep our hands off it. Biden, Trump, both two heads of the same hydra. If they, if she actually goes with Trump or DeSantis or whatever else, they're going to be full-on Trump train. They're going to talk about how at least these guys are stirring up the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Incredible. They don't remember that time, apparently, or they have amnesia. Um, people didn't feel safe. And I'm not advocating for vigilante justice, but when government doesn't do its job, people step up to protect. Wait, you're not? This is Fox News. You're not gonna. You're not gonna advocate for vigilante justice. You're on. Fo Wait, why not? Themselves. That's exactly right. And and I, I don't. I would not assume that. Uh, they have amnesia because when you think back to that time, we remember very clearly that immediately after this incident, this tragedy occurred with Kyle Rittenhouse, the mainstream media, pro-Antifa politicians were very quick to say this kid is a white supremacist 
terror. I really like this. The, the pro Antifa politicians. Antifa, known for having a tremendous base of support in the Democratic establishment. Antifa, known for being a uh, highly integrated into the, uh, the power structure of the Democratic Party. Best buds, the Democrats and Antifa, uh, right next to each other, right there. Um, the, the, I, I saw some clips from this. I didn't see the whole thing. Um, the, the language that she uses here, I'll just hold on. Uh, and so even at that time, in the midst of all of that chaos, there was no interest in saying, hey, you know what? This is a tragedy. The, the crisis that the city is facing is, is, is a tragedy. People didn't, people didn't say that. This is another Republican talking point that, uh, that, that like the pro BLM Democrats are like blind to the damage being done during the protests. This is a very, very common one. Like, you know, you wanted the, the riots, but you don't even care. What happens. It's a very, very common, like sort of implication that everyone else is failing to pay attention. Let's actually wait and follow the evidence and, and let this work itself through our judicial system. Uh, the government absolutely failed to fulfill this most basic responsibility of keeping their community safe. That, well, that's, that's true. Uh, the police in America historically have done a pretty bad job uh, managing riot conditions. That's true. I've told this story before, and I'm going to keep telling it uh, to you guys, the story of the L.A. riots, which took place just a little bit before I was born. But in the L.A. riots, um, the uh, which 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 took place after the exoneration of the police officers who beat half to death Rodney King, uh, the the riots took place and um, were devastating. They caused an unimaginable amount of devastation uh, to Los Angeles, and the LAPD essentially forced yeah they forced the rioters into Koreatown. See, the rioters were mostly black people because the Rodney King was a black guy. It was police brutality against a black person, you know, and. Uh, they wanted them out of the white neighborhoods. So the police coordinated to sort of cordon, not to stop the riots, but push them towards Koreatown. You've heard the meme rooftop Koreans. That's why, because it was seen that was what was happening. And Korean business owners took to the rooftops of their buildings with rifles to protect their uh, neighborhood. It led to a lot of death and destruction, and it could have been prevented. The goal, yeah, was to pit two non-white groups against each other as a way of diffusing the political tension surrounding the riot in ways generally advantageous to the white majority and to, um, well, let's just say that LAPD, not 1992 and not today, uh, they are not known for being especially pro, uh, pro people of color. <laughs> no, no, uh, certainly not then at least. Um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, I want to learn more about this? Do you have any links regarding it? Yeah, it's wikipedia.org slash LA riot. No, seriously, hold on. Um, the, 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 the specifics of uh, how to control rioting in a way that minimizes damage are like really complicated. And I won't pretend to know all of it, but we do have some really, 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 really public bad examples we have some extremely public bad examples uh, in existence. Um, by the time the riots ended, 63 people had been killed. This is more than the total number of people who died during BLM over its entire nationwide duration. This was just in one city uh, 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 over a few days. Over 2,000 injured, more than 12,000 arrested, and the estimate of property damage were over 1 billion. Um, I think think that the total BLM property damage uh, has been estimated at around $2 billion, I think so. So in one city, in a couple of days, one half of the total property damage done by the entirety of BLM over months all over the country was taken in just one city. Extraordinary stuff. Uh, you can actually see photos of, um, of uh, the National Guard that were brought in to guard Beverly Hills, the neighborhood where I would be growing up in just a few years later, because, you know, that's where the wealthy people are. Um, let me see if I can find that. Um, it's pretty wild stuff. I don't know if I'll be able to find, like, a specific photo of them guarding the Beverly Hills sign or anything especially evocative like that, but there's a whole lot of stuff out there on it. Um, anyway. What are we talking about? Tulsi Gabbard, hello. Kyle Rittenhouse shouldn't have gone and done what he did. Uh, yeah. But as you said, you know, he's, he's a foolish kid who, uh, like others in the community, felt like they had no other choice boys but to will step be boys. up and to try to do their part to keep people safe.
You know, Congresswoman, I have a problem with the inconsistency that I see from the left. Really? And people that claim to be civil libertarians that wanted to fight for the rights of the people. If you agree that the state should have the knee on someone's neck and kill them, then how could you support the state intentionally targeting a young man that it shows in the video? If you didn't like it when Derek Chauvin murdered a guy, how can you be okay when a person who kills people gets arrested? Are we talking about the arrest here? What? You claim to hate uh, state violence. Uh, you didn't even like it when that black man was murdered. Well, then how can you support uh, an arrest? How are these connected? I'm lost. I, I don't know. Video that is self-defense. It shows on the witness stand. The own prosecution's witness admitted that he aimed his gun at him first. That's not the be-all, end-all of all self-defense, but also that only took place after the trial started? Wait, what, what state intentionally target he's saying the state is intentionally targeting a young man do you mean by putting him on trial which is where it was determined that the thing you just said happened what admitted that he aimed there is no care or interest in evidence or the facts or justice really it's about politics it's about hey are you one of us or are really? you one of them are you on our team or are you the quote unquote enemy and as we've seen in this example and others I think he's talking about the media storm around it. The media storm is not the state. Is he, is, when he said the state is targeting this young man, did he mean the media? If you want to make the argument that the media has been mean to Rittenhouse, then sure, but that's, that's not the state. That's, that's, that's not what that is. If you're not on our team, then you are a racist. You're a white supremacist. True. You're a terrorist. True. And they levy out these allegations really without care, again, for the evidence, facts, uh, or the consequences. And we're seeing the same thing happening here uh, with the judge in this trial. Because of his ringtone being <laughs> a patriotic song, God bless the USA. Unbelievable. Well, obviously, there's... These people believe the state controls CNN. Yeah, yeah. Well, well. Uh, what, what Tulsi Gabbard is doing right now is she's playing the, uh, the classic turncoat. Uh, look, her Democrat status is featured prominently. She's no longer a, uh, 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 wait, has she, is she out yet? Wait, hold on. I always forget if it's, if it was 2020 or 2022 with her. Um, yeah, she's been out. So she's not a politician anymore, but she still is being labeled as a Democrat here. Um, and, uh, she's, she's playing the, uh, the, the turncoat, you know? Um, uh, her job here is to say, yes, the mainstream media is lying, it's biased, they don't actually care about anything, they don't care about justice or racism, they just play politics. She's essentially here to do the job of the Republicans. Uh, it's, it's, what are they called? Um, when you set a person up to be like the opposition, but they're, they're, they're like a, 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 you know, weak, what is that? Um, what is the, what is the term for that? A controlled opposition, exactly. But uh, yeah, yeah, controlled opposition, precisely. Thank you, thank you. I kind of said that, didn't I, when I put all those words together? They're saying, hey, he's, he's biased towards Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, so, so what conclusion are we to draw from that? That if you love America, then you are a white supremacist? Maybe. Uh, this is the craziness of, of what we're seeing play out here, which really, for me, you know, it, it shows uh. that... They hate America, that they have... See, see, look, literally, like, this is Reagan. This is Thatcher right here. They hate America? This is, um, this is, uh, 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 so flagrantly, um, an, an attempt at pushing right-wing propaganda through an ostensibly nominally left-leaning mouthpiece such disdain for those who love America that this is the allegation that they throw out and it's especially offensive as we sit here on Veterans Day uh all right <laughs> oh god I can't believe people bought this man I should we have should we have played the whole thing with Tulsi we should uh, okay hold on um would you agree with me that it would be a good idea to go back to being energy independent yes of course uh, not many Democrats agree with you. I wonder why. Maybe it's because the methods by which we achieved energy independence, like through fracking, were destructive and bad. 
Would you agree with me that we have too much debt? Look at her fucking smile, dude. Like, she knows what she is and she knows what she's doing. And we really can't afford 1.75 or 3.5 trillion in new spending. Yes, Sean, and, and here's the reality with basis. the bill that they're continuing to push forward is that our government is too powerful and too... Okay, so this is the 30-second spiel that we got, the cradle-to-grave mentality, government wallet. Okay, that's the one that we saw earlier, the 30-second soundbite of Thatcher briefly possessing her body from the spirit realm. Smaller. You know, as I look at the position Joe Biden is in, in the mid-30s with his, his approval rating, Kamala Harris at a low 28%, I look at every problem they have. On the problem with the economy, if you lower taxes, limit the bureaucracy. Hello, Shu. Uh, that would stimulate economic. Yes. Growth. Neocons. I love it. Yes. Lower taxes. That is exactly what will stimulate economic growth. You are totally right. It's not like there's a century of economic research indicating that just cutting, cutting, cutting taxes does not stimulate economic growth, that the best thing that you can actually do is fund infrastructural development and make sure that you have the proper uh, underlying conditions necessary for people to uh, <sighs> contribute meaningfully to the economy. You need infrastructure for a functioning economy. This is not up for debate, okay? Literally trickle down economics. Growth, I think that would be helpful. On the energy crisis, we don't have to beg the cartel OPEC for, to produce more oil only to be rejected again and again if we go back to the Trump policies of energy independence. Which entail what? Are they going to actually mention it or? The same goes for the nope. border. Stay in Mexico. I, li I like how by not mentioning how energy independence was achieved, they, they like imply that Biden just has a gigantic like old fashioned switch on his desk. Like make America dependent on other countries or don't. And that he just like, hello, Jack. Just fucking, like, they think he does this with the gas prices, too. He just, yeah, inflation, he's just got a bunch of wheels and levers, you know. Bye-bye, <laughs> energy independence. Mexico, build the wall, and the insane policy of... She nodded after he said build the wall, by the way. ...process and release that Joe Biden has. Do, is there any, any inclination in the administration or the Democratic Party besides Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema that you see? Is that, is that how we spell? Cr these aren't auto-generated subtitles. I'm pretty sure these were added manually. They're not auto, I'm, these are not auto-generated. These were added for the Twitter videos that we're looking at. They, did, did, this, did this get like outsourced? Is there like a Bangladeshi, like slave worker? Like somewhere, like typing these out? What? Okay. That you see that would adjust, adapt, to, and change their policies because the ones they're using are not working? Uh, it's, it's hard to see people being inclined to actually look at solutions to the challenges which that are, everyday Americans are facing right now. Which are. Because they're so focused on the mm -hmm. partisan politics. They're are. so focused on saying, hey, well, if that was a, a Republican idea or a Republican uh, policy, then it must be rejected. They're literally not, though. It's the opposite. Republicans are, like, to a man, refusing to support things. Uh, that, that that Biden or the Democrats are putting forward. Literally, the Build Back Better shit, zero Republican senators. They are the ones who are excluding their support for policies based on partisan politics, objectively, directly. Uh, this was something, Sean, that I that I saw. The infrastructure when I first bill is full Congress, of things that Americans actually of, care about. You know, if you're on the other team, if there's a bill that's that's uh, being put forward by the other team. You got to oppose it. And this is on both sides of the aisle. This focus on, oh. uh, you know, uh, their own party, their own power, rather than just saying, hey, what's best for the people? Follow through on what that? policies can we work together on to actually bring about solutions to the challenges Americans are facing? And so this is a save at the last second. There is no both sides on this one. The Democrats, the Build Back Better plan is literally full of the shit Americans directly care about. It is directly, immediately a collection of things that are popular with Americans and Republicans will not vote for it. They refuse to vote for it. Republicans will not do it. They won't do it. Um, there is no both sides here. It is, ve it is exclusively Republican obstructionism uh, that is preventing us from moving forward. 
And we're seeing how it is everyday Americans who are suffering the most from this inflation crisis. So maybe we should should pass something. Also, I haven't looked that much into it, but like when we talk about the inflation crisis, like I have a Okay, I could be completely wrong on this, but I think that every time inflation comes up in mainstream media, they're basically just lying to make people feel fearmongered. Like I I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure they just bring this shit up as a way of deterring government spending. Like the uh like the government spends some money and people are like, oh now inflation will go. That's not what I don't I don't think that's what leads to a huge increase in inflation. It's a bunch of really complicated shit, but I don't think it's I don't think it's like, oh, the government spent uh, 200 billion extra per year to make people's lives not miserable, walking the hell. <laughs> now inflation's up. I, I, I can look more into the future. I just. From the multitude of challenges that we're facing, they're the ones who are carrying this burden on their back, not the politicians who are too well, busy squabbling with each other. The poor and the middle class are disproportionately impacted by higher gas prices on average about a buck yes. 50 more a, a gallon it's going to cost people anywhere between 500 and a thousand dollars more this year to heat their home every item we buy in every store we go to costs more because it costs more to get it there that's and crazy what do we do simple to me I, i'm just looking for a common sense solution wait it seems simple to you you're looking for a common sense solution what is it and they say that they care about the poor and the middle class. Like they're talking about high inflation like it's a policy that Democrats put forward. Listen to this. They say they care about the poor and the middle class, but they put forward the higher inflation bill. Ask, why wouldn't, what difference does it make to the planet if they, if they extract the oil oh my God. in the Middle East or in Russia or we do it in the United States. If we do it here, we have high paying career energy jobs. We don't have national security concerns with countries that hate us. And we have low gas prices uh, for the American consumer. And that's- Can you imagine a world where the conservatives in this country were not bought out by energy companies and we could actually invest in green energy more than any other country on earth and we could lead the world in green energy infrastructure and technology and then sell our patents and our technology to the rest of the world have a unique like cast of high education engineers and researchers capable of fielding the entire world's transition into green energy that'd be cool i mean we could do it we absolutely could do it we absolutely have the money to do it unquestionably we could do it we have the ability to do it but uh nope Hannity takes his money from oil billionaires. Sorry, Fox News, Murdoch, they're all buddy-buddy with uh, oil and coal. Sorry, can't do it. The A few hyper-wealthy people just happen to make a lot of money off of making sure that these things don't happen, even though all the people who actually own these companies are 85 fucking years old and are going to die long before the impact of any green energy investment actually devalues their companies. That's great for our economy. Why wouldn't we do that? I don't know, Sean. Well, I think we can look at a variety of options to move us closer towards energy independence. But I think, Sean, if we take a step back to that Kamala Harris quote uh, with the clip that you played earlier where she says, you know, this multi-trillion dollar bill, uh, it's not going to cost anything. Uh, you know, we're going to pay for it. It just shows this, this detachment from reality. It's not going to cost anything. So then what are we actually paying for? And what? I, I'm just going to assume that she is either deliberately or stupidly misinterpreting a thing that was said. And who's the we that she's saying is going to pay for it? It's we. It's we, the taxpayers, who are going to pay for this. You don't sound like a Democrat to me. I hereby... That's uh, uh, a great point. Yeah, you can raise your right hand. You're definitely a conservative. Ha ha ha, don't give it away too quickly. Ha <laughs> ha, Hannity... Hannity, this grift only continues as long as people believe I'm not one of you. <laughs> anyway, uh, always a pleasure, Sean. We always love having you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I hate it. Shu, I'm blaming you for this one. You're responsible for at least one fraction of 1% of American support for Tulsi Gabbard. I'm blaming you for this one. Sorry, Shu. You threw your fucking hat in with the wrong crowd. No getting over it. Whew. No, no, she was cool back then. No. The only way to do politics is to go on Twitter, tweet Bernie good, and then go off Twitter. That's it. That's all we have. Sorry.
Any anything else is a mistake. If you just stick to that, just Bernie Good, just that will carry you through every time. Every time that'll carry you through, you know? You don't have to fuck around with anything past that. She was the Bernie cheerleader? Shoe on head, you make one mistake. She was the Bernie cheerleader against the Democratic establishment. Not for his policies, but against the Democratic establishment. Same thing Trump did. Trump did this too, you know? Oh, Biden. Biden's a loser. He's, he has to cheat and steal to defeat Bernie. It's a way of sowing infighting within the Democratic Party. But I don't know how much of this is a grift, how much she's changed her mind, how much of this is brain cancer. I don't know. I don't know. But that was the, the, the big thing, right? Her calling out. I'm going to kick your ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut the segment. Cut the segment. Cut the segment. Let it be.